Alright guys, in this video, we are going to learn about HTTP and observables in Angular. Currently, in our application, we are serving the data that is hard-coded into the employee service. But in a real-world application, we need to fetch this data from a web server. So we need to replace this hard-coded data with an HTTP call to the server. Now before we proceed with the code, let us first understand the mechanism of an HTTP call and something known as an observable that is returned by the HTTP call. So we have our application that runs on the browser. In our application, we have the two components, employee list and employee detail. Both these components make use of the employee service for their data. And right now, the employee service provides hard-coded data to the components. But what we want is the data to be fetched from the server. And for that, we make an HTTP request. The HTTP GET request will hit a web API or a web service, which will fetch the data from a database and send it back as an HTTP response. The response we get back from the HTTP call is an observable. Now the employee service needs to cast this observable into an array of employees and then return the same to the employee list and employee detail components. So the HTTP mechanism is just two steps. First step, send the HTTP request. Second step, receive and process the HTTP response. Now this second step is where things might seem a little complicated. So let us first understand what an observable is and get a clear picture of the HTTP mechanism. To help you understand what an observable is and how to work with them, I'm going to use a very simple example of a newspaper company. So we have a newspaper company and this company has a source of information. The company makes a request to the source to send in everyday news. As a response to the company's request, the source sends in a sequence of information throughout the day. Now once the information is received, the first thing the newspaper company has to do is convert the information into newspaper format. For example, the source might just send in a single line of information, but the newspaper company has to map that information into a headline, a body for that headline, and so on. Once that is done, the newspaper company has the newspaper in the desired format and is ready to be distributed to the houses. But hang on, does the newspaper company distribute papers to every single house? No. It hands the newspapers to only those houses that have subscribed to this company. So if a new house subscribes to this company, that house will receive the newspaper as well. Right now, let's say the first two houses have subscribed to this company. So only these two houses will receive the newspaper. And after this point, what the people want to do with the newspaper is completely up to them. The newspaper company does not bother about it. House one might read the newspaper, whereas house two might make paper planes out of them. But the company's responsibility is done. So now that we have understood this basic example, let's see how we can relate this to observables in the application we are working with. The newspaper company is like the employee service in our application. The source of information is nothing but a database or a web API or a web service. The employee service makes a request to the database with the HTTP GET call. As a response, we get back an observable. But what exactly is an observable? Let's take a look. An observable is nothing but a sequence of items that arrive asynchronously over time. But what you have to make note of here is that with an HTTP call, it is a single item instead of a sequence of items. And that single item is nothing but the HTTP response. So in the context of HTTP mechanism in Angular, an observable is nothing but the HTTP response 
that arrives asynchronously. Back in our application, after we make a GET request, we receive an HTTP response as an observable. But this is not a format that we can readily use in our application. So once we receive the observable, we need to convert it into an employee array. After conversion, the data is ready to be provided to the components in our application. Now, do we provide the data to every single component in our application? No, we only provide the data to the components that have subscribed to this employee service. Since we need the data in the employee list component and employee detail component, we are going to subscribe to this observable from only these two components. And after this, it is completely up to the components to decide what to do with the data. The employee list component might decide to display just the name of the employee, whereas the employee detail component might decide to display the complete information about the employees. Well, this is pretty much the best analogy that I can give you to help you understand the concept of observables. And don't worry, this will make a lot more sense when we write the code in the next video. So we can summarize the HTTP mechanism in Angular with the following four steps. The first step, make an HTTP GET request from the employee service. The second step, we receive the observable and cast it into an array of employees. Third step, we are going to subscribe to the observable from employee list and employee detail components. Finally, we assign the array of employees to a local variable in the components which can be later used for display in the view. And as the last part of this video, a quick word on RxJS. RxJS is a library that enables us to work with observables in Angular applications. It is reactive extensions for JavaScript and is nowhere related to React library from Facebook. It is just an external library to work with observables. All right, now that we have a good idea about observables and the HTTP mechanism in general, let's implement it in our application. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.